Hello, hello. Can you all hear me? This is a very quick and spontaneous test. But I really hope you guys can all hear me. And you can hear my partner, Tom the Astro Canuck, in this duo live stream. How are you doing? How's it going? Perfect. Can you hear Tom? Is he loud enough? Is he too loud? We still need to tweak some settings for the stream. Yeah, there's a, it, it's something new. It's something different. I got two cameras going on here. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in on Twitch. Those of you who are on YouTube, hello, hello. Good to see you guys in here. It's a bit of a different, different thing we got going on tonight. I don't know if there's going to be double audio. Hopefully not. We're trying something new. We're trying something a little new today. Max is asking where he should watch on Twitch or YouTube. Well, it's up to you. And now I really can't go into Discord or I will screw up our webcam <laughs> settings over here. That's interesting at least, let's say. Yeah, it's. we'll see how it goes. Um... Yeah, I mean, Tim, if you want to uh, introduce yourself on Twitch over here to people who are watching who may not be familiar with you. Hello, everybody on the Astro Canuck channel. My name is Tim Richter. I'm an astrophotographer from Germany. I'm doing astrophotography in my free time as a hobby. And on this day, I'm joined by your streamer over here. And we will talk over and cover the great conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn. Over to you, Tom. Introduce Thank you very much. to my side. <laughs> Thank you very much. How are you doing on YouTube? Twitch, good to see you guys as well in the house, in the, in the observatory. I am Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. And most of the time, I'm taking live images of outer space. I'm an astrophotographer of about four years now. And lately, what I've been doing on Twitch for the past three months is sharing the night sky whenever skies are clear in the UK. So it's a new little thing we're trying out here with uh, with Tim, with the uh, with Astro Addict, and we figured it'd be kind of fun to cover a bit of the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction because we're both clouded out and we have absolutely no views of it. So if any chance we get, we can share it with everybody. We're going to do it. So it's a little exp it's a new experiment. We haven't done this before. So if there's some hiccups, bear with us. It's something new. So we'll uh, I suppose there will be hiccups at some point. But let's see. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and all of you who joined us in this live stream may be on Twitch or YouTube. I guess you are clouded out as well. Otherwise, most of you would be outside with either a telescope or something else to look at the conjunction. But as most of Europe and the rest of the world supposedly is clouded out, we are over here. And the plan is to cover the live stream from Telescope Live. As you may know, I have worked with them before, they are really nice people, and I hope they don't have any problems with us today, maybe sharing some of their stream and talking about it. Tom is a bit louder than me, yeah. that's what I hear in my ears too. But how do I change that now that uh, we are what if I do Discord? Now, this, don't, is that any don't, better? Don't turn yourself down, I need to do it myself. So let me just switch to something else over here. Yeah, so I might mute my mic on Discord now and then just to uh, address any questions that pop up on Twitch. Yeah, I, I'm going to do the same, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem I, I told you with the hotkey. Mm -hmm. All right. Now he should be at the same level than me. I hope so, at least. All right, as you may know, the conjunction is happening, at least the closest approach. People have been talking about it all this week and early already. The closest approach is happening at around 6 p.m. my time, 5 p.m. his time, Tom's time. And I, I didn't find exact measures when it's going to happen, but at the time I hope we can share some live footage from Telescope Live. And in the meantime, we're just going to talk about anything astronomy or astrophotography related 
on our channels. Doesn't doesn't that sound great? It's fantastic. <laughs> it's good. It's uh, yeah. For anybody who has any questions about astrophotography, astronomy, uh, I will do my best to answer. Tim will do his best, and I think between the two of us, we'll probably be able to field any of the questions. And we do have some uh, other in my channel on Twitch. We do have some astrophotographers in, in the in chat as well. So we have a, a myriad of people who are ready to take on any questions that we might have in the meantime. For sure. On my side, there are currently 52 people watching, Tom. I don't suppose it's going to get any more in the stream. How about you? I have, we have 15 viewers right now, which is uh, a bit of a record for this time. I don't usually stream at, uh, at, at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's true. I'm early. So it, it's good to see, uh, good to see some other people, some new faces in here who usually can't make it in because of the, just the time difference. So it's good to see you guys in here. And yeah, just kind of looking forward to seeing how this goes. And the next question I need to settle right now. I suppose your audio output is the same as my PC. So if I now activate some music. It seems like some music is coming through. Perfect. All right. If you, I, I don't hear that on your end, so I might be able to. I, it's, it's not. It's for the stream on, on my side. Perfect. Let's see if I can kind of put my general music on as well. So to everyone in my chat, can you hear some quiet background music? Does it annoy you? Is it too loud? Can't you hear it at all? It should be just the same. <laughs> Fifty-eight people watching. That's almost a new record for me. It's fine. Perfect. Sounds good. Nice. All right. Are you still setting some? I can see you talking in the webcam, but I can't hear you. Yeah, just running, running back and forth with some things. All right. Sorry, did that was that too loud now? No, no, it's 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 good. <laughs> All right. So I, I turned you down for the stream, but in my ears, it's, it's it's okay. Let's see. Ah. I could turn it down on the mic, but I don't want to screw up any settings right now. All right. Well, I'll, I can I can boost mine up. I'll uh, I'll go easy on the audio for now. There you go. Uh. Arctufus is saying Telescope Live will start their stream in about 50 minutes. So yeah, so in that time, just kind of hang out, chat, and whatever kind of crops up, we'll uh, we'll deal with it as it is. Like I said before, this for me, it's a, a different time. Um, and usually, yeah, we'll, we'll usually start around 8 o'clock uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And yeah, for 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it's a different format, something new to try out. For sure. The, pr the problem with the conjunction from our standpoint, we will hopefully soon look through a telescope in Spain. The telescope, I think, I think, I think they're using the gigantic RC telescope that they have, which will get a very close view of Jupiter and Saturn. The problem is at the point where the conjunction is happening, the planets are so low above the horizon and they're going to sink even deeper in the meantime that we may only have 10 or 15 minutes of any footage we can share and I hope we can get the, the highlight of the stream will be the last 15 minutes where we can maybe show something at least we hope so exactly I think that'd be uh that would be interesting to see. I mean, this is one of those events that they say it's like, you, know, you get these these sensationalized headlines of, oh, this is a once in a lifetime event. And in a way, yeah, this one kind of is. They're, they are not, they're not uh, pulling the wool over your eyes for this one. It is, uh, it does happen, was it generally about every 20 years, they do kind of, their orbits are going to line up, but this time it's, they're within, uh, was it one arc second or arc minute? E even, even less. I, I think even less than that. I think Dylan recently, uh, this morning posted a photo, it was 10 minutes, 10 arc minutes. 
I can't remember, but it's really close. So let me see about uh, you know, pulling up a bit of a visual for what we're potentially looking at here, and hopefully I don't scuff the stream. <laughs> Right. While you turn up the visual for your stream, I suppose I could. That was weird. Mute myself in here and talk to my stream. Maybe some questions, and we can use this back and forth and explain. To. Zero point one degrees, says Econ Greg. That's pretty close. No, I messed it up. Okay, we're back. Alright, I have one or two questions already, so I need to figure out if I can mute myself. So I'm gonna now mute myself for Tom. Alright. And I suppose... Tim has currently muted himself. Oh god, everything is... Okay, so if I turn that, if I move this out of the way... And the one thing that I did not think about right now is that... Oh, there's a live stream of them. Right. It's so like I can still hear him and talk over his voice. Like I said before, How a bit of a different now? kind of format going on here. So uh, bear with me if, if any messages kind of pop up in the chat and I miss them. I do apologize. I will um, <laughs> I will scroll back in chat. We'll catch up there. And yeah, it's great to have you guys in here as well. I think it was uh, it's a fun idea. It's something interesting. All right. I think I now muted Tom. Wally. Yeah, mute him, that's easier said than done. Or can I just do that in Discord? I... Thank you, Max. I need to switch all of this back. Tom, I have to do one little test right here. Yep. I can, of course, mute you in Discord, but I suppose you're not. your audio source is the microphone by itself and not through Discord, because if I mute you here, I don't want to mute your stream on your side. Uh, no, I think if if you mute me in Discord, and I think it should be fine on here, because I'm not. my microphone's connected from a different source. Alright, I'm gonna mute myself. Not to annoy you and mute your you until anything else pops up. All right. Great, 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 great. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. No. Okay. So it looks like. All right. I'll. Let you do it at least. At least for now. Alright, there were a few questions. Technif there are always technical difficulties. The first question already five, five minutes ago. What camera do you prefer? S Stefan? Steven? What camera do I prefer? You should specify that question a tiny bit more. Or do you mean our webcams? What are your thoughts on Halo Siren Stars using a filter? Alright, back to some astrophotography questions. Well, the music is still in the background, yeah, of course. I guess back to some astrophotography questions to fill some time. Halos around... is the trial filter... An, is a trial and error getting Halos with the IDAS D2? As far as I know, the problem with halos is the out-of-focus infrared light that your camera collects. So, using, of course, a good glass like FPL 53 can at least make them look better. And if you use the IDAS D2, I think, don't, I, I think, has no infrared cutoff. So if you have no infrared cutoff, you maybe need a second filter or get an IDAS filter with the cutoff in the infrared so that you don't go to get any of the out of focus infrared light, which is the halo. So it's mostly kind of 
the filter problem. What equipment are you using to capture the conjunction? Nothing. It's clouded over completely and Tom and my side. Tom's and my side. We plan at least. I hope it works to uh, share some live images from Telescope Live. They are live streaming the event as well. I've had some contact with them earlier for other things and I, I hope they don't mind that we share at least something of their of their work from the YouTube or from their YouTube live stream. The Celestron AVX good for go to mount. The only problem is that I can't Hang on, I'm going to prepare some something all right all right this still worked perfect so here you can see the plan for this day the telescope live stream which starts in about 40 minutes and you asked asked about the celestron avx so So let's put this website in English. I hate this. That's always perfect on this, the search bar over here. Of course, every website is now in German. Wow, they have Austrian as well. Perfect. Such a big difference. But let's do something better, something smarter. The Celestron AVX mount. Well, good enough for go to. Of course, the, the question is of course, what do you plan to put on there? From the cost itself, it costs about the same as the Skywatcher HQ5. And PC. PC correction always says that the mount is a bit more high quality. PC interface, yes, USB is very important in my opinion. Peer tripod. The basic database. The next R plus system. Depending on what you want to put on this one, it's a very good idea, of course. All right, let's switch back to this view. For everyone joining, I'm today joined by Tom the Astro Canuck and he's just answering some questions on his stream. If you want to check out his stream, he's live streaming on Twitch right now. The link is in the description. Camera and lens, well, of course. This mount, the AVX mount, will be more than enough for a camera and lens. Don't worry. I'm pretty sure this thing, how much power supply? 12, candle weights 1. 14 kilograms is average, lower payload capacity. This mount will be more than enough for you. And you can even put a small telescope on there, no problem. How long have you been into this hobby and what is the one single most thing which attracts you know, hobby and keeps you in the And how much have you spent on your gear till now? Oh wow. The most single awesome thing? I suppose it's the first time capturing the Orion Nebula. Plate solving, getting closer each try to the nebula. And by the, by the moment the telescope was centered on the nebula, the picture was taken, and then the picture needs to be transferred from camera to PC. Now the thing with that is, even with the USB 3.0 cable, well no, it was the Canon camera, even with the two, uh, USB 2.0 cable, the data from the image was earlier on my screen than the image itself, which means that the histogram was there earlier. The histogram jumped to the right side and freaked out and I knew in this one second until the image arrived. This, this was gonna be awesome and was awesome. And 
it is still one of the most insane and I'm glad I was able to capture it on video. How much have my, has my gear cost until now? I think around about maybe 6,000 bucks, 5 to 6,000, I suppose. What focal length a star adventure can hold, according to your opinion? If you get a lightweight scope, 300, 400 millimeters, more than 400 is always dangerous without auto guiding and for such a small mount. 300, 400 maximum, I suppose. I never tried it out, just a guess. Alright, and I think for the time being we can switch back to Tom. And I hope this works. Why is this happening right now? I see he's still answering some questions over him on his side. I, of course, don't want to interrupt him. And if I disable the full screen mode now, your webcam view will completely vanish. Can I message him in some way? I don't know. Do you think you can mount a 70 for 20 on it? I think the can the Star Adventure be fitted with auto guiding? I don't know. But if it is, there's always there there are 70 millimeter scopes that are compact and lightweight with two or three glass lenses that should work. But if it is a quadruplet with extensive gears and the RP focus system, I don't think this will work. It's quite on his Twitch stream. Well, better write that in his chat. What is your opinion on Redcat 51 and Skyguider Pro combo? The Redcat is awesome and the Sky. Guider? Tracker Guider? Yeah. Sky Guider, of course, I assume you mean the Arctron. This will work and it can be awesome. Get a, get a counterweight on there, of course. And if you can, some auto guiding in this equipment can get you very far. Get a filter in there, light pollution filter, and these images will be perfect. Alright, did I miss anything? I hope not. Alright, Rob, I see. The, the, one, the only problem with questions in this chat, if there's no question mark behind the end of the of the... Oh, my words today, behind of the end of the sentence, I kind of read over it, assuming it's just something said to another viewer, maybe. I'm sorry. EQ6 are pro or CGX? It's a matter of taste. I think it's only just a matter of taste, really. The EQ6 are pro looks awesome. I've never really taken a look at the Celestron mounts, but you can of course compare the tiniest details in gear ratios or anything, but that won't get you very far. Try to see which one fits your situation right now better. The payload capacity, how much power it needs, that's the, the so those are the more important things. Yeah, if you have a question, maybe go ahead and write at Astro Addict in the chat. That way these messages are highlighted for me. That's more that's better if you want to ask a question to me. What's your opinion on Optolong CLS filters, clip-in ones? Well, clip-in or not is really no difference, but the, C the Optolong CLS is awesome. I've used it on the Andromeda Galaxy image and it can do very nice in like polluted skies. Alright, let's try to regain the connection with Tom, because the time is slowly but surely 
heading towards 6 p.m., where the live stream from Telescope Live is going to start. Can you all still hear me? YouTube just said that the stream shut off for a moment. I hope we are still back. I hope we are still here. I hope so. Tom, are you there? Someone in my oh sorry, someone in my chat was saying that something with your audio was wrong and I can't hear you either right now. As always people, technical difficulties, we've never done this before. And Tom, I of course don't want to fall into your questions if we have, in case you answered any right now. I'm gonna do a thumbs down whenever I not hear you talk, but I can see your talk. That's inconvenient. Alright, in order not to disturb you, I'm gonna mute myself again, and maybe you can figure out where the problem with the microphone is right now. Alright, I muted myself for him, and I can maybe go over some more questions of you guys. Let me just pour some more tea for myself. And if I know by accident put anything over my microphone, I would be devastated. Alright. Where did I leave where did I leave the questions? How should you know which how strong the light pollution filter should be? And I I've had two light pollution filters so far. The astronomic, astronomic CLS CCD, which I consider a strong filter, and the Optolong CLS, which is a weaker filter, at least weaker than the astronomic. I'm just always looking at Tom's camera, I don't want to annoy him in case I'm not muted, but I think I am. Well, back to the question. How strong the filter should be. The astronomic will work in the light pollution, but it can draw out some reds or some color from the object. The, C the other one, the weaker, will let in more light pollution but also more color. The editing will be harder, but it can be better. It's depending on your bottle scale, really. Everything up. I would draw the line between bottle 5, so bottle 5 and down, the CLS can do a good job, the Optolong, and if the, your editing is, is not as... if you're not sure how to edit this data properly, maybe go for the CLS CCD if you live in bottle 6 or up. Is there an app or website to calculate how long the total exposure should be for an object? I don't know of any. I always go by gut feeling. Nebula with a narrowband filter 5 minutes at least, if you go for broadband less than 5 minutes. As you add, welcome to the stream. How's the seeing? We don't we are clouded over. We plan to share some image some live footage from Telescope Live. 
for, for my words today. Let me drink some tea. It's hot. Furthest you have traveled for astrophotography. The very, the very first trip I've done with the scope was La Palma, which I consider my beginning of this amazing hobby. Yeah, four hours by plane, and the entire telescope in the plane, which was awful. <laughs> I want to see the conjunction through my room using the telescope. Well, if you have a clear view, just point the telescope at it and see what you can do. So out the window, if you can see it, if you have view south, south, south. Just point the telescope out the window. Or maybe your question was more in detail, I don't know. Alright, let's try to get back to Tom. Maybe he has solved the mic problems. Are you back? I can't hear you on Discord. We had this problem earlier, is it the same problem? Welcome back. Are we good now? <laughs> the only problem was I was not able to mute you via the buttons here in Discord. I just decreased your sound volume in Discord. Uh, and, ah, that, that, okay. and that doesn't show up in, in any kind. You have <laughs> muted him. No, it, it, it's it's not. Oh god, our webcams are spazzing out. Hang on. No there we go. We got it. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. These are the technical difficulties. These are what it's going to... There's a... If we nailed it the first time, then I wouldn't believe, wouldn't believe that there. A master, master Cox PL. Thank you very much for joining. Us. And now he's back. We are here with uh, with Tim. We are with with Astro Addict. We are going to be looking at the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. I am Tom. I am the Astro Canuck, and I, I'm so appreciative that you guys are coming into uh, my channel here on Twitch. And you're here with uh, with Tim and I on YouTube, and yeah, it's a joint venture, trying something out, starting something new. Um, and you don't know if we're gonna like it until we gave it a shot. For well, sure, we have, I think, half an hour before the our event is going to start. Where did I put the live stream? Here it is. We have 26 minutes left to kill. What are we going to do? Well, I can switch over to see if I can have my um, virtual camera shared as a view from Space Engine. Can I enlarge Give me one second your here. camera real quick in my stream? I, I, I don't know that I could do that on the fly. Sharing your scream, s scream stream will be would be way better. Well, that's of course an option, but it wouldn't work. You can't hear Tom? Why? No, how about now? Can you hear me now? You should be able to hear him just as... The music I'm hearing right now. We good? We better? I think I'll be muting kind of back and forth between uh, the can, Discord chat right, and... My, no, my chat can hear. Only one person was saying that he wasn't able okay. to hear you, but it seems to be alright. Yes. I think you can hop over to your... You, you were able to show your stream, right? In your webcam? Maybe I can enlarge yeah. this view for my... So you, so you can do something for both our streams. 
if you want to. All right. Streamception, all right. <laughs> so bear with me, all everyone in chat. There we go. Is that any better? I'm just trying to make this. Will this work? Spontaneous try. Right, I have to disable some text. And now my stream should see a very low quality, may hopefully not. Well, if you want to show something to both our streams, now is the time. Alright. Are we seeing the uh, are we seeing the Earth right now on your screen? Yes. All right. Reading some text is maybe a bit difficult, but it should work. Ah, I got. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, it uh, if I don't know how to flip it on Discord and how to get things not looking flipped on my screen no, no. here. So again, they they are not flipped, just a little lower res from the. Okay. So we're looking at Space Engine right now, View of the Earth. This is a, a the free version of Space Engine, just to kind of get a good idea of where where Saturn and Jupiter are. Let me uh, let me target Jupiter. So there we go. There's our kind of our view of. Uh, of the two planets for the conjunction. They're very, their orbits are very, very close right now. Um, I also don't know how to check out exactly, isolate the orbits in here, but at least we can get a rough idea of where, uh, where things are along the plane of the ecliptic. So Jupiter being almost six astronomical units away from, uh, from our point in, uh, in the solar system. And Jupiter and Saturn are only split by about 458 million miles. So while they look nice and close together in the sky, there's still a vast amount of space in between the two planets there. So we'll uh, take a quick trip over to, to Jupiter. And I think and show it was actually the case that they look, of course, look to be very close to each other, but... I think it's it's supposed to be that Saturn is exactly double the distance that Earth is from Jupiter right now. So it's interesting what happens today. Mm -hmm. So one Earth right. Jupiter distance is double the Earth Saturn distance right now, which doesn't happen very often. And right there you go. Thanks, Ark. Perfect. Back to you. Oh, approach too fast. So one of the cool things about Jupiter, and it shows it on here, is that it does have... Where is it? Where can I get that view? It was kind of tough to get it. But Jupiter has its own ring system as well. Well, I suppose there we all go. the outer gas giants, gas giants have the rings, but they are just not that visible, like from Saturn. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see it, at least here. There's a bit of a ring system that we're kind of traveling through right now. Yeah, yes, I can. It's very faint. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can... There we go. Oh, no, we can see it. Change the exposure there. So I thought that was a, it's a kind of a cool thing. We don't really, we can't see them that well from Earth. So at least uh, being able to get this kind of vis vis visualization and, uh, you know, being able to see it, there's way more to, uh, to Jupiter than we can see with the naked eye, essentially. 
I suppose it's not possible for an astro or planetary photographer to photograph Jupiter's rings because they are so faint and the seeing is bad on planets in general. Because yeah, I mean, I, we haven't, we've I got a hard enough seen, time <laughs> as it is with seen everything. I've rings on Jupiter photos. I want to say that there was a, was it, it wasn't in the infrared version of a, an image of Jupiter that we were able to, to see the rings, were we? Have to check on that. I don't think I saw this image you mean right now. All right. So maybe let me switch to Solarium and we can get a closer look on this one. All right. Unless you plan to do anything else right now. No, let's have a look in Stellar and see what it would be for uh, for our view of things. All right. Don't freak out on my stream. I need to center everything back right now. Here's my beautiful face again. And of course the text. That was not the text. Here we go. All right. I don't think I've missed any questions. Some new people came in. Hello, welcome to the stream. We have maybe about 20 minutes left until we can cover some live data from Telescope Live of the conjunction. And in the meantime, let's go over, drag this over here. I'm going to open Stellarium in the background. Right, I'm just going to mute my microphone for a second. So here we are in Stellarium. I'm gonna really quick. The only problem is, hang on, that Stellarium does not really show up instantly in any screen recording. And I need to set the language back to English because it does not save these settings. All right, where did I click now? I can't, why can't I see my mouse in Celerium? It's so weird. I need to look at the stream to see it. Here we have Jupiter and Saturn in the screen. Let me pop up YouTube the back so I can read your questions. This one. Also cloudy in Germany, yes, I know. We have 76 people watching, awesome. All of you who are clouded over, we will hopefully soon receive some data, or at least talk over the stream from Telescope Live. Maybe we can see it. And now let's look at this. I should be able to get another view here. I know that sometimes the screen is turning black for you. I'm sorry, I can't change that. All right. This is the live, the, the live view of Jupiter and Saturn right now. They are very close together. And if I disable the atmosphere, you can't really see any difference. But the awesome thing really is, let me go back, disable atmosphere and disable the ground. We can either over here focus on Jupiter or Saturn. Let's focus on Jupiter. And I think the hotkeys for the time, I know the hotkeys for the time. Let's switch back, I suppose, a day, a day or two. So this is how Jupiter and Sun looked exactly yesterday. And now we can scroll forward. Let me activate the EQ system. Can't see my mouse, it's so annoying. All right. This is very fast, this is ours. So this view right now, orbiting moons and Saturn and Jupiter and right here. This is the closest that Jupiter and Saturn will visually align for us in the next 800 years, which is pretty insane. The only problem with our view of this amazing conjunction is that the Earth is in the way. And we have only a short window of time we can't see the closest approach, but we can see at least 15 minutes of it before the planets hide underneath the ground. So we'll go back a tiny bit over here. 
You can see all the satellites whizzing by. And very soon here they are. And I hope we will get a view like this very soon from the Telescope Live network. If you want to check out their stream, I have linked Tom's stream again, stream and the Telescope Live stream in the description if you want to check it out. And maybe we'll even see the planets of the moons of both planets, which will be amazing. All right, I think Tom is answering some questions for for his viewers, so let's just get back to him, shall we? And before I close the room, I will go back over here. Hello there. I don't think if Tom can hear me. Tom, can you hear me? I think he muted me, but that's totally fine. Let me check again how much time we have left for the stream. Not that stream. We have 13 minutes left, so have there be any... Have there be? Were there any questions? Clouds, clouds, clouds everywhere. And that's the reason why we have some remote telescope services. So the conjunction and took a couple of pictures here in India. Awesome. Love from America. I missed the chance. Apps is mostly clear. I hope you will get another chance. Cloudy plus below horizon here in Queensland. It's not good for us either. Cloudy in Cyprus. Two, almost below horizon. All right. A question from... How should I pronounce the name? Let, let me pronounce the name as I would do in German. Stefan. Z-W-O or Q-H-Y. A tough question. Me having tried out only one Z-W-O camera. I would of course say ZWO, I don't have any experience with QHY, but the recent images from Trevor from Astro Backyard with his QHY camera were pretty darn epic. I think both camera manufacturers have a good lineup of cameras for each individual need. Just what you... <laughs> In the end, maybe it comes down to which color you prefer. I don't think that the differences are that drastic. Looks good for Christmas Eve in the UK on the south coast. Awesome. Let me drink something real quick. You can see the link to Telescope Live in the description, really? I'm an idiot, hang on. And now I need to type, no, I don't need to type it again, hang on. Oh god, this doesn't, this doesn't work. Wait, wait, alright. I need to, I'm gonna, going to type in the link right now again in the description hang on I need to find it again because I have it on YouTube what am I doing here Alright, now you, you should see the link at least if you refresh the site. I just updated it. I hope it works. You have a 360 imaging refractor and plenty of QHY color camera. What should be my next tel what should the next telescope? Well, if you want to get some bigger deep sky objects, some, uh, want to image some smaller deep sky objects, yeah, go for a larger refractor. Or if you have some experience, you may be able to get an RC running a Ritchie Crutchen telescope. Or if you like spikes and maybe get 
want rare chance of visual and astrophotography, a Newtonian telescope, a bigger Newtonian telescope will be nice. Alright, we have 10 minutes left until the Telescope Live event starts. Again, I hope they're not angry with me that Tom and I are going to borrow some live images from them. And let's chat, chat, check back to Tom. I did not mute him, he muted himself. Hey! And he's back. How's it going over there? We have less than 10 minutes before the... Should we say TL live stream is going to start? Telescope Live? I'm sick of saying Telescope Live every time I want to mention Telescope Live. <laughs> we keep saying Telescope Live too much. Everybody gotta stop saying Telescope Live. I agree. We'll just say TL for Telescope Live. How many viewers are over on your set? Because I'm breaking records right now. <laughs> oh, fabulous! Uh, we have I, I, I got twenty people in here right now, and that's uh, that is really cool. We got a few few people lurking. Some people uh, just asking some questions. One one uh, we had one who was a little worried that Jupiter and Saturn were going to crash. Uh, however, I rest, reassured them that they are separated by many millions of miles. So it's just our visual view, and it's uh, and I said before, even in my chat rules, there are. It, for you to ask as many questions as you want and if you are um if you feel it's a stupid question it's not a stupid question there are no stupid questions about this we are all beginners at one point you know i wouldn't even say that i'm anywhere near an advanced knowledge of uh of astronomy and astrophotography but it's uh the knowledge i've kind of gained over the years and um you know kind of learning from people who are you know, really who are really good at astrophotography like uh You know, learn from them. It's uh, there's a lot of tips and tricks that uh, we kind of pull out of the bag, and just kind of learn along the way. I just had to smile because there's a joke in in German, where the professor is saying there are no stupid questions, and someone is asking something really stupid, but I can't translate. It doesn't make sense in English. I'm sorry, but I just had to smile because of that. Uh, all right. It's a shame that most, most of the jokes don't work in the other languages. <laughs> oh, something's lost in translation there. Harbstrom is saying, this is exciting. Uh, I'm pumped to see this collaboration, bringing the world together through space. Space. <laughs> Love it. Thank you very much. Thanks. That That's that's also my brother. <laughs> Good to see you in here. I don't often, uh, we don't often get to kind of catch up on, on things here. So it's uh, really good to see, see more, see some, old faces, some familiar faces in the chat, and some new faces, and SNSA Jacob, who has just joined the observatory. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank awesome. you for joining. My chat is exploding right now with everything. It's awesome. Are we allowed to send a link? Um, yeah. yeah it's, uh, let me know what it's about, and then uh, we can have a look. There. Usually I'll kind of ask if we do any links, drop them in Discord. That is our Our link there for the Discord server. But yeah, usually I was I was really hoping, really hoping that I was going to be able to kind of get this uh, get this view of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I got houses and trees blocking the view. And uh, can't cut down the trees, can't knock down the neighbor's house, so we just got to uh, find some other means to enjoy some views of uh, of space. Well, let's not say can't knock down the neighbor's house. Maybe <laughs> say it's forbidden or against the law. <laughs> they would just strongly object against it there. Alright, five minutes from now until we have maybe, hopefully, our footage for the Great Conjunction. Have you seen Dylan's post 
his his meme of the Great Conjunction. I don't know who that character was on this image, but it was like some uh, astrology weird stuff. But it was very funny. No, no? didn't see that there. I haven't, uh, was it on Twitter? I think he posted it everywhere, but yes, you should find it on Twitter. Hey, Bog692, thank you for joining the observatory. Thank you for the subscription. I appreciate that very much. Well, thank you. Thank we could have go, of be, course, go somewhere second. high up, but I unfortunately cannot just take my PC high up with all of you to on the next mountain. And we don't have any mountains here in the local vicinity that are high enough to breach through the clouds. Sadly, I can't go on Mount Everest right now. I'm sorry. And since I don't want to annoy Tom with my talking right now, just mute myself. So have, have there been any questions? I think I skipped over some questions. According to you, which should be better, binoculars or telescope for me as a beginner? Well, what do you want to do? You can, with binoculars, you can only observe. Will be fine, will be cool, of course. But with a telescope, even if it is a simple refractor with an eyepiece, you can even take some moonshots with a smartphone. That's amazing. Send up a stabilized telescope on a weather balloon. Who needs Hubble? Where do I get the next weather balloon? I think that's out of my price range. All right, I have. We have maybe one minute left until we're going. I'm going to check back with Tom, and after that, one minute until may, hopefully our first data from the. The actual live data from Telescope Live is here. We will check into their stream. What's my day job? I am a cashier in a grocery store. We are thankfully not... Well, we are affected, but we're not closed during this second lockdown, which is happening in Germany right now. 2 minutes 10. Is there anything more I've missed? I don't think so. There are 91 people watching. Hello, everybody. Again, since there's only one minute left right now, my name is Tim. I'm the Astro Addict. I'm joined by Tom, the Astro Canuck, and we're having a surprise live stream this evening, and we want to show some live footage from Telescope Live. They are live streaming the event also, and I hope we can snatch onto their stream, and I hope they're not angry with us to share some of their views. And since the entirety of Europe and maybe the... My candle has gone out. And the entirety of the rest of the world is probably clouded over right now. We have no other chance than to go to some remote telescopes for this view. 1 minute 10. Let's check back with Tom to see if we can get this set up. Check, check. Declare, hey. We have, mo we have 1 minute left. All right, excellent. Are you so, ready? Let's have a look at some of the live views here. So yeah, we were just uh, we were looking at Stellarium on this side as well. All right, I just started sharing the stream from Telescope Live. I can see Marco over there. I already talked to him earlier. I see he's pre prepared some folders, actually, some slides over Zoom. Let's see at which time we're going to have some actual footage. So maybe just go back in the meantime to our own stream. There are a lot of people over there on his channel. 300 almost. That's awesome. Oh, wow. All right. Did you send me that link? I did. In Discord. Should I send it on any other way or? Um. 
Yeah, I can't get to it unless I close this window, can I? Go back to the chat. I can maybe just hop on to your stream real quick and put it in there. All right. It's that... Wow. Oh, I can, I can hear music on your side. I hope I can real quick put the link in here. There we go. And I hope my internet connection is not going to drop extensively now that I've got your stream open as well. Should be fine. It's uh, actually it's not working out too bad on this end. I'm wondering that. See, well, also what I've had, um, just technically speaking, <laughs> I've had my internet drop out um, the odd time here and there, which is kind of annoying. Um, but it's been so, so far. It's been so. It's been working out all right. And I think it probably might even just be a certain program I have open while I'm doing the uh, the regular streams. So if I do drop out for a second, I will be back. All right, the Telescope Live team is now going through some verbal effects and a presentation about their site, in, in which case we're just going to wait until they have maybe a view of this. So we have some more time to talk about anything right now. Is anything on your mind, really? That sounded darker than it should. Do you want to talk about anything, Tom? hate clouds <laughs> well yeah I, I've seen w Tom and I both have discord channels for astrophotography for the community and I've also I've also seen that you have a channel in there called something against clouds my, my mine is called complain about clouds what's your called <laughs> yours called the text channel uh, what have I got in there Um, oh, I actually don't have a channel for just complaining about clouds. It's just a general channel right now. Everything's still in its infancy. <laughs> it's a, a lot of other things to kind of set up in here. So, you know, like I've said before, I'm a uh, nine to five. I'm a graphic designer. So it's kind of stepping away from the screen at the end of the night is a little important. So I try to dedicate as much time to, uh, to the channel as, uh, as I can. And yeah, over the Christmas holidays, we'll be adding a lot more to uh, to the Twitch channel, to the Discord, and yeah, just kind of making it uh, making it our own. And which will be, I'll add a category for clouds. And I've seen that many people are introducing themselves. Hello from cloudy Belgium. Hello from cloudy Canada. Hello from cloudy Az Azores, Azores, from the islands. So everyone in the chat right now, I think, even on Tom's side in, the, in Twitch, just type in hello from Cloudy and insert your location. And let's see how many people we can get with clouds right now. I think most of us. Most of us. Yep, that's it. Here. Cloudy Italy. Hello from Cloudy Indonesia. That's awesome. So far away. Hello from very wet southern UK. Hello from Cloudy St. Catharines, Ontario. Hello from Cloudy Brickles Ham Bay, UK. Cloudy Germany, of course. Hello from Cloudy Minnesota. Hello from cloudy Ontario, Canada. Rotten Johnny, good to see you in here. We have no clouds in our country. You are banned right now. <laughs> Wait, whereabouts are they? Because we'll all jump over there. <laughs> yeah, jump over there real quick, everybody. From cloudy Ontario, Canada, cloudy France. We are stalling for just a few minutes until we hope that Telescope Live has a live view of the conjunction. Cloudy Northern Ireland. Cloudy Netherlands greets you both. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello from Hello Netherlands. I have to say hello this, Ireland. This is a lot of fun. This is cool. Bringing a lot of people together as well. Just the, those 
the people have kind of a fringe knowledge of uh, of astronomy, so it's uh, it's always good to to kind of get a little more people interested in the night sky. We just picked one hundred viewers. That's amazing. Awesome. That's tremendous. Hello from cloudy Roland, Oklahoma. Actually, good to see you guys in here. We have uh, we have twenty <laughs> twenty three consistent viewers right now, and yeah, this is this is this is great. I mean. You know, usually we, we kind of sit with a, a comfortable, you know, 12, 15 people in here. And it's good to see, good to see you guys hanging out here. And good to see those uh, interested in, uh, in astronomy and astrophotography. And everybody who does astrophotography on this channel, uh, let me know. Or if you're a streamer, let me know. Because we're always trying to see what we can do to just kind of broaden our communities and have that inter, um, interrelationships between everybody. Because you're going to find something that's interesting that may not generally be with astronomy, but maybe you'll have a common interest somewhere else. And someone, Al Perezzi. Hmm? I'll mute that. Alright, so, someone in the chat gave me uh, the best idea for the next video. Let's photograph the cloud nebula. It's the best idea I can imagine, because I can pump out videos every day, if that's the case. Hello from Arizona. Awesome. Melbourne. Australia. Melbourne. Really? Excellent. And that's what I also love about this is that you can, you get people from different areas of the world who may not even have access to the night sky. Um, and there are a few people I follow who are in Australia and in the, you know, the, the Southern hemisphere that have access to a lot of targets that we don't have, that we can't see in the Northern hemisphere. So, and hopefully we can afford those opportunities to show you guys targets in the northern hemisphere that you can't see in the south we all pretty much share orion which is uh which is a great connector between everybody there so i like that yeah i think um hello from cloudy dubai not cloudy dubai clear skies actually awesome clear skies in dubai all right hop on the plane there we go we're going to dubai and Kaju Man, I think you mistimed the next conjunction. You said 2080. It's 2800, I suppose. The next time we're going to see this. All right, you see. Yeah, we're always going to be able to see. You see in the top right here over my head, the great conjunction is happening at 610. On my side, it's now t only two minutes left, and I hope that we will get. A view from Spain soon. And the th thing that's shocking me, that's shockingly to me, I think it's still a bit brighter in Spain than it's over here, which is, which makes sense, but yeah, it's pretty bright over there. William is saying that the next it will be 2080, I, I, I suppose that the full conjunction, the closest approach possible from our view will be in 800 years, but maybe there will be a not so close one in 2080, that's of course possible. I see that yeah, yes, the, the TL side is showing some video of their observatories right now, but nothing well, but nothing we could show of the actual conjuncture right now. Let's wait a tiny bit more. Yeah. All right, I will uh, have my screen kind of set up a little differently here. Just hiding my... I have two of my faces on here at the moment for, for my side of things. All right, for everybody new joining in right now, we are waiting for some live data of the conjunction from Telescope Live. I'm on my monitor just monitoring their stream right now. Just in case if they show anything soon. Since we are all clouded over, we're waiting for some remote data from remote telescopes. And right now they're showing a pretty awesome view of their gigantic Spain 2 telescope, which is a very big Richie Gretchen telescope. And it looks awesome. 
And Excellent. What? what uh, yeah. So I was just going to ask, what uh, what's your kind of favorite go to scope that you're using? Or what do you what do you set up with right now for your telescopes? Was this a question to me or to your chat? Uh, no, to you, Tim. What uh, what is your out of the telescopes that you own? What's kind of your favorite one to uh, to use? My favorite one is definitely the rather new uh, TechnoSky refractor I'm using right now. It's a quadruplet refractor. It has a focal length of 350, which is an awesome fit for most deep sky targets for the expanded nebulae in Andromeda Galaxy. And I could, of course, use a full-frame camera on there, but the cool ZWO camera will be is an awesome fit for that. That's my telescope. Awesome. Small refractor. I think I feel the same way about having a small refractor. I do have, I'm currently, we're using a, a 8 inch Richie Crechan telescope right now to do some imaging. But just the, the ease of a refractor, uh, I have a small 72 ED Skywatcher. And that thing has worked out really well for me. I think I've got a lot more images come in a lot brighter than, uh, than the RC scope. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, Everything seems just a little bit sharper with the refractor. Well, the sharpness is of course dependent on the on the pixel size of the camera and on the focal length, but with a scope that big as a Richie Gretchen telescope that you have, it will look a little bit more blurry, but it should work, right? It actually doesn't look too bad. The the camera that I'm using is a ZWO ASI 533 and the you know the it doesn't it, the the sampling is actually pretty much right on point of where everything should be which is awesome works out well because it matches up with my smaller 72 ED refractor so it's like the kind of the that for me is like the perfect camera and scope combination for uh, for both of those options there so I don't know if anything would be changing too much in that way the equipment but um, yeah I'm happy with how the the images are coming out there Awesome. All right, I'm watching Marco from Telescope Live right now as he is talking to his viewers. I hope we will get an image of the conjunction soon. And in the meantime, we have to kill some meantime. <laughs> that is all right. Um... What is the, the latest target that you've shot? Or what's uh, the latest project you're working on right now for, for an image? I am not working on any, anything right now. In the time since the last video I published on YouTube one and a half months ago, that was the last clear sky I had. And the last image before that was... was the Hart Nebula, actually. So I took the wide field refractor and the camera along with the uh, double narrowband filter to image the heart nebula and it was awesome having the whole nebula in there i did the heart nebula before in, with a bigger scope in a four panel mosaic but having the whole the whole nebula in there in just one shot is was a really great view there's there's tons of, like the heart nebula as a whole is an amazing looking nebula but then kind of looking at everything else it's uh you know the core of it Malot 15 and the fish head nebula all those little pieces are really interesting targets to, to kind of zoom in on and get uh, get some more detail in there i think it's just one of those areas of the night sky even with the paired up with the solar nebula there's so much in that little section that you could spend you could spend months getting a, a massive mosaic kind of together with that there yeah, and that's the awesome thing, because from my latitude, of course, Cassiope Cassiopeia and both of these nebulae are so close to Polaris that there's almost an all-year window on these objects, whenever it's clear. You can really soak in a lot of data on these targets. Yeah, I had that with uh, earlier on in the season with the, um, with the Whirlpool Galaxy. Um, I was able to spend a lot of time on that target, and... Didn't even realize how much time I was acquiring on there. I had combined about 40, 42 hours worth of data on a wide field and a, uh, a long focal length on the target there. 
just one of those targets. I didn't expect that much time to kind of come in there. So it, it can pile up quickly when uh, when you have a succession of clear nights rolling in, which hasn't been that way for me for quite a while. I've had maybe two clear nights in a row with about three, four weeks of clouds. And I've just realized that today is winter solstice. So the days are going to get longer again. Oh, I'm so annoyed. I no, That's it. I, I, th I thought that the event is starting over on Taylor right now, but it's not. They're just showing earlier images of earlier conjunctions. Maybe we can get something soon. But not yet. All right, well, is that, uh, as soon as that kind of crops up there, okay, yeah, because for me, where are we at right now for um, for the location? Yeah, the sun is pretty much pretty much set for me right now. So, had I been able to uh, to catch any of the conjunction on my end, this would be the this would be the time to see it. It's not the time to see it. The last week has been, the days have been alright, let's say, maybe only clouds, but the nights have been foggy as hell. I w you couldn't go outside without not seeing the next 10 meters. It was awful. Always fog in the night. And, always, and that's so annoying when the, the, during the day everything is nice and clear and crisp, and then as soon as the sun sets, all the clouds just kind of come in and start the party above the house. I'm like, ah. If we can get a fan large enough, then that would be uh, that'd be great. Get rid of all these clouds. But I, th I think such a fan would blow away more <laughs> than just the clouds. <laughs> you know, no satellites, no no planes rolling through your uh, your images there. Oh, that's such a sweet idea. Well, maybe I think we, in when... maybe we can strafe this subject for a little. Because when the first train of starlings rolled out, rolled out, the entire community screamed in terror what, about what's going to happen. But yes, this problem was big, but I haven't seen actually that many. Maybe you get used to at least seeing maybe 10 of them in one night. But I did not see that many because they, well, how many are up there right now already? 500, 600? Uh, oh, I, I think off the top of my head, I don't know really. the others. And he's got a few hundred. I think he wanted to uh, one of the 12,000 of them being up, being put up there. Well, they want to put up 12,000, yes. But the thing is, I think I read it in some paper that as soon as they reach their terminal orbit, their highest orbit, they are not reflecting actually that much light, and that may be the reason why the ones started. We, we can't see them anymore, at least not with our eyes in a clear mm -hmm. sky. They will show up in astrophotography images, but as, soon, but as long as they are not that big that we can see them with our eyes, they won't be problem problems in our images because editing them away is not hard. Yeah, it's not going to be like the, uh, the iridium flares that we, uh, we, would see, that we saw a few... Uh... I guess last year was kind of when the last one was uh, was visible. I've never. Although it was kind of cool seeing those in the rhythm flare with my own eyes, and now they are gone. But I've seen even starlings can flare pretty bright for a few seconds, which is awesome, but also scary because there are so many of them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Hector, Hector, how are you doing? Good to see. You. When is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn? We'll be uh, waiting for the live stream coming in from Telescope Live to uh, to show it there. It is occurring now, but uh, our view of it, we are we're in uh, in Germany and in England, and we have clouds, so we're relying on some other people who are available to get these shots for us. So we uh, we'll get those live views coming in as soon as Telescope Live throws their images up there. Alright, I have a few questions in my chat, let me get back on that real quick, and I'm going to 
jump back in. Something is happening. No, it's not. No, nothing I yet. I think they are also stalling time on, until they can show anything. <laughs> so I'm gonna going to answer some questions in my chat, and you can maybe do the same, Tom. And we can meet right. back as soon as anything happens. Will do. Awesome. What is my wish list? You mean the Christmas wish list? The Christmas wish list is only... <laughs> I don't want it to sound any... I think something is happening right now. Hang on. I think something is happening. Alright, what are they doing there? I see that Marco... Let me switch over to their side. And I need to get the camera out of the way for that. I think they just acquired their first image of the two planets. Are you on their stream as well right now? Yeah, I got that shown on uh, on here. All right. All right. He's twiddling with some features. You can see that Saturn is way br uh, that Jupiter is way brighter than Saturn. The telescope. I don't know which telescope they are using, but those two planets are very close together. All right. I'm going to full screen him on here. You can hear uh, you can hear Tim and I in the uh, in the background there. I was hoping that we could see some live video from this event right now. Wait, it is live video, is it? Exposing, yes, it is, it, it is live video. You can even see the moons of Jupiter down there. I thought it was a still image, but this is actually the live view from their telescope and camera. That's their live, excellent. They, they have, of course, also some other people joining in their stream and talking about everything that's happening. I'm trying to figure out which telescope they are using. CCD camera, of course. The cameras they're using are high and high tier, amazing stuff. Out of every price range I could ever consider. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They're, uh, they're getting that all dialed in there. So hopefully we... Uh, sorry, see, this is about kind of like... I mean, like Tim said, I would not be able to get uh, <laughs> kind of views like this with my scope. So we are relying on uh, on those with larger professional uh, bits of equipment there to get these views for us. Let me zoom in this entire thing a bit more. As far as I can. Alright, on the left side you can see the actual live video from the grid conjunction, which is pretty amazing. Those plants are very close to each other. And I'm wondering if we can actually see the planets move right now, because of, they are of course being tracked by an it's not a GEM mount, but it's a tracking mount at least. Mm -hmm. And if we wait long enough, I suppose, I don't know if they are tracking the plants itself or if they do sidereal tracking on the stars, but we should be able to see the planets move either way. I'm just going to put a, a full screen view on there. So yeah, the conjunction is happening right now. This is the uh, the view coming from Telescope Live. And I don't think that they have a lot of time left either, because they are situated in Spain right now with their remote telescopes. Some of them are actually there in Spain and some of them, like Marco over here, are in their Zoom call talking with guests and 
audience, maybe. But they are situated in Spain and the plans will be under the horizon in, I think, 10 minutes. We don't have much time left. But it's awesome to see to actually, actually see something over here. Exactly. It's a small... I mean, a lot of people... There can be some people who are maybe thinking that you're going to see, you know, in those well-processed astro photos. Um, but yeah, for, for a quick live shot of the planets there. I mean, for, um, for what we're used to seeing, like, this is this is cool. This is really cool seeing these two um, planets in the same... In such a small view as well. There's one thing that's just coming to my mind. Do you know of... I, I think you know of him, but... Do you follow uh, Alan Wallace on what he's doing on YouTube? Um, no, I should. There's there's one video he put up and just one second. There is a question. Is, is Saturn going over the top of Jupiter? Can that ever happen from our perspective? I don't think so. But no, Saturn is not going over the top of Jupiter, sadly. If that would happen, wait, so Saturn, yes, you said Saturn over the top of Jupiter. How should that work? Jupiter is closer to us than Saturn. That, no, that's impossible. But either way, no, this view, as you see right now, is the closest they are approaching in the next 800 years. Which is pretty darn epic. Once in a lifetime event, even less, even less often than a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse. And so at least with a total solar eclipse, you can kind of travel around to different places in the world to be able to, to catch the views of that. But um, we can't move the planet in any other direction to try and catch these, uh, these conjunctions in this uh, close proximity visually. And William is just asking, will, it, will there be a conjunction of those two planets and the moon, of them dipping behind the moon at the same time? I suppose there will be, maybe contact Stellarium and calculate it, but I don't think it will happen in the next 10,000 years. Such a rare event. Yeah, I mean, see, it's something you can kind of run that through Stellarium to see. Um, but you'd have to be uh, rolling through that for who knows how long there and make sure you get the, the right view. But yeah, for now, it's uh, really yeah, but, interesting to see that. But I think that Solarium has a calculation tool where it can enter values and it will calculate when this event is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You thought that Jupiter was actually going to eclipse Saturn? Sadly, no. This is the closest we are getting tonight. And we won't get any close in the next days. And back to do you want something? Do you want to say something, or can I get back to the thing about Alan's video? Um, yeah, there's one comment that I had come in on my chat here from Architufus. If Saturn is as close uh, as that to Jupiter in real life, they would be attracted gravitationally to each other, one would probably be, probably be flung out of their orbit, uh, as what we're seeing in the photo, if they're actually that physically close. And that's a good question. You know, we could probably even try to run that in uh, a universe sandbox. That would be awesome. I think they would just crash together and explode violently in... maybe even from a star. <laughs> Well, all right, yes, yeah, so that, uh, that other channel you were mentioning about there. What was the name again? Excuse me, what do you mean? What was the, the that YouTube um, channel that you had mentioned before that I wasn't following? Alan Wallace, the almost best landscape astrophotographer there is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he's, he's doing some amazing work on YouTube, and there's one video he put out 
that maybe many people are coming in right now in any kind of stream that's going on right now and they have read in the news that something epic is going to happen tonight that the best view in the next hundreds of years that two plants will align and form a Christmas star and the video was about how the media actually portrayed a false image of astronomy events that people are going, going to be hyped that something epic is happening in the next hours that they're gonna see explosions or hundreds of star trails no not star trails of meteors meteors or something yes thank you and then when the actual event happens they are so disappointed by astronomy itself but the problem is that the media itself are portraying most of the events way too overhyped and I hope that that's this doesn't happen too much in this conjunction. Yeah, as I think a lot of people were kind of expecting like a, a grand shot. I mean, from the ground without a telescope, yeah, it looks like a nice, really, really bright point in the sky. It does. And it's not until you kind of, you know, break out the binoculars or get a higher powered telescope that you can resolve that these are two separate planets. And yeah, I know the media can kind of uh, sensationalize things to try and get more more attention, more views. But I mean, looking at this image right now that we're seeing coming through... Uh, their feed knowing how how, how we, you know we see these images coming through for astrophotography this is incredible this is an amazing shot and i know that some people can probably feel a little underwhelmed by it thinking oh that's it but no it's like there's more to it than like there's kind of the raw data that comes through it's not as polished as all these uh, really wonderful images that we see in magazines and on uh, instagram or everything like that so kind of being able to experience you know the the science in its almost purest form that uh, this is pretty special to be looking at this right now and seeing a uh, as live a view as possible of these two planets so hopefully not a lot of people are like oh that's it like how about all oh, that's awesome Well, I hope that we will be able to see any, even any type of astrophotography, may it be wide field landscape of this event, may it be 200, 300 millimeters, or even as they are doing, I think, 5,000 millimeters. Any finalized image of this event will be amazing. And I hope to see some processed images very soon. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of people putting, we're going to see in uh, probably even about an hour or two, start seeing a lot of amazing images cropping up on uh, online there. So we'll definitely I'll be sharing those, uh, sharing some links on our Discord and any retweets as possible that I'll do on, uh, on my channel. We'll share those around. It still surprises me how much fainter Saturn is in this view. I know you can see it of course with your eyes that Jupiter is brighter, but this much? It's actually still surprising. Mm -hmm. And I suppose they are getting lower and lower above the horizon now as they are fainting out, I think. Yeah, and they're, gonna have to, they're shooting through so much atmosphere as well, and if, they're, if the... The plane of the ecliptic would be a lot more convenient if it was overhead. Maybe if we had a, a, an orbital axis like Uranus, at least we would... Uh... I think in that case we wouldn't exist, because this axis is stable as it is, and I don't think it would work the other way. And how should we track anyways? We couldn't see a, a north star, because pointing at the sun, it wouldn't work. We'd have to pick out a new North Star. You will, but the, the Sun would be... Well, depending on where the X is going, you're right. What I do like is, uh, in running in Stellarium, is uh, watching how Polaris and, and Vega switch positions over the, the millennia. So if you point towards the uh, the North Star and Stellarium and just run it as uh, as fast as possible, you can see how Polaris shifts and that Vega becomes our new North Star in about 12,000 years. Is that because of the procession of the Earth? I think that's the term. 
Yeah, so the way how um, with our orbital axis, um, it's there is still a bit of a, a wobble as it moves, so it does kind of point in a bit of a different direction in the in the night sky. So, and they pretty much switch about almost every twelve thousand years from Vega to uh, to Polaris. Didn't know that. Awesome. So yeah, it's a cool little thing to watch. And in some of the, in some cases, you can see the uh, the movement of the stars, uh, the constellations changing their shape. And um, I guess it's another thing is that when we're looking at these the, the constellations, like you know the, the even Orion, that everything is you know it's not just a you know a flat plane of everything. Like the the stars themselves are hundreds of light years away from each other. Um, I guess along the uh, the z axis. Yes. So as things kind of move, there is a, there was a new vi uh, vi visualization from I don't know if it was it wasn't Gaia, but it was some. I can't remember what it was now off the top of my head, but it was showing like the the movement of the stars over the next um, few million years and just how everything is changing and how like the the Big Dipper or the plow is going to be all wonky and not even close to what we're looking at right now. Well, I suppose that that's the thing about the constellations. There is, I think, one site that actually has a 3D map of these constellations that you can just zoom in the, the z-axis as you said and look at them from the side and actually see that it's just our view that makes them look like the Big Dipper or Ryan. There's really no nothing behind that, just a thing humans made up. That's it, and that's where kind of even, um, you know, these, these stories that were told uh, in the early days and how, you know, there was that almost... Um, that marriage between astronomy and astrology. And it was, you know, we had the stories of how, of what these stars mean, what the, um, you know, these, uh, these beings, these, these uh, representations of, uh, that were up there in the sky. And eventually once, you know, there was that separation between when the science started kicking in and, you know, you, there's your difference between astrology and astronomy, but we still have those references that still stick to this day. And it's, it's, uh, I guess I do like that, you know, we, we still keep those traditions. Otherwise, we would have, like, Starry McStarface as some of the names of the constellation now, if we were to name anything new. Well, the problem is also that by the time those people back then named these constellations, they didn't have any light pollution. Imagine that. That's true. That is true. I said before, I'm in a I'm in a Bortal five zone and probably bordering on a six because the uh, the LED lights mm -hmm. that have been installed in the town are just kind of taking over. Well, if any new viewers joined right joined right now, we just saw some live footage from Telescope Live, a remote uh, telescope hosting site from the great conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn. They were pretty close to each each other. If you are maybe into the topic of astronomy and saw these images right now, you can, in the live stream, skip back a few minutes if you're watching this after the stream. This view was pretty epic. And right now they are back to explaining what they are going to do in the future, and the view is not there anymore, sadly. But I suppose that the planets have dipped under the horizon, or will dip under the horizon very soon for them. Yeah, it's a very, very limited time that we had. Uh, we were able to kind of see these the the two planets because they are, you know, visually they're much closer to the sun right now. If they were kind of like how where Mars is at this point in the in the night sky, we'd definitely have a lot more time with these targets. So, I mean, yeah, take advantage of of things whenever we can. And this was, yeah, like one of those kind of once in a <laughs> in a lifetime view of this proximity of the two planets. As brief as it was. It was brief, but some things are. Even a, even a total solar eclipse lasts only minutes, but being there is, I think, an experience you will never forget. I still need to do that myself. Yeah, I definitely want to cut. There's, um, there are some eclipses that are passing in, uh, in North America that you'd want to try to check out in the next, uh, next, next four years. Be a total solar eclipse. There's there are maps online that we can confirm all that there. 
Just need to change the text on my screen. Hang on. Has happened already. I can't think of anything else. All right. I, I suppose that Telescope Live is now done with their view, at least. And now they are talking about different stuff they're going to do. I'm kind of afraid of closing their stream right now because they may be showing something more, but... They kind of get something up there, yeah. Alright, and in the case that they are done with their live view, our plan was to go maybe a little post-event, talk about what happened and answer some questions in the chat, and maybe go on for maybe 20 minutes. In my case, what do you think, Tom? Yeah, no, I'm cool to kind of hang out a little longer. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm on, I'm on my holly bobs. I'm on Christmas holidays now, so <laughs> the the next best thing would be to see uh, see some clear skies kind of roll in there. Uh, hey, Fulmine, how you doing? How's it going? Good to see you in here. There are some my... conversations about slab pollution in the chat right now. And yes, if you have a light polluted area, narrowband is the best way to get great images, but you can also do get great things out of broadband data if you have enough data and can and are good at editing. Have you seen Tom, have you seen the image of from Trevor? He he was shooting the Pleiades unfiltered from Bottle 7. Did you see that image? Unfiltered. <laughs> I feel like no. Was this one of his recent images? Yes. Let me just. I'm gonna just pull up his Instagram. Like he's he's doing some amazing stuff, and I've been kind of following his uh, his his YouTube channel since he was at like uh, just over a thousand subscribers. So to kind of see him see him blow up like this in in the in the greatest way possible. And I'm just sharing his, uh, some, showing some of his uh, Instagram photos. It's not on Instagram yet. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it was in one of his YouTube videos. He showed the Pleiades unfiltered. And this final image was amazing. Unfiltered. That's cool. I, I don't know how he did that. Patience. Patience and enough clear skies to get that, uh, to get that going. Probably. And, and just looking and at the, the equipment, it was the, the Skywatcher Esprit, I suppose it was, this amazing telescope, and the Canon EOS RA, which captured this image more red, but it looked awesome. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just what, looking at the uh, the progression of how his processing has, has come along, it's you can kind of see like the, just this point where he picks up a new form of processing these images. And they just have this uh, this kind of velvety smoothness to them, and yet they still have like a lot of detail. That's, I, I, uh, I know that's what you mean. The 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 thing is, every if you just scroll through random astronomy astrophotography images, you know it without reading it that this image is from him. You know it just by the, the yeah. way he edits and makes these images perfect. You just know it. Yes, that's Trevor's image. Mm -hmm. I don't. As soon as I saw it, his. Uh, yes. His a pod of the tadpoles come up. That was like, and hearing it, like just kind of follow, even just following that little journey that had gone on uh, with things. It was just like, yes, just seeing that uh, you know, not only just a fellow Canadian who is, uh, you know, who's cropped up on uh, getting that accolade there, but just kind of following his journey for so long, and that this has become like his uh, his full time gig now. You know, that's. Uh, I guess something we can all maybe hope for is that our passion can become our livelihood as well. That would be the dream, of course. Yeah. Gotta go. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for staying here. Beam me up, Scotty. Mr. Scott, I'm sorry, but it's just the phrase <laughs> I'm used to. Alright, I don't think that I have missed many questions in the chat, but mostly comments on what happens right now. Thank you for everybody watching, of course. The live event from Telescope Live now 
is not over, but the plans are below horizon for them. So we can check that off the list. I w I'm yeah. glad we had at least some view, even if it's only a program with an open live window. At least having some view of this event is great, was amazing. Yeah, I think it was really cool to see that, just to get that opportunity as well. Um, you know, and trying something out, something, something new. I mean, this, doing this together, I think, you know, I think it was a fantastic idea that, uh, that you had to, to give this a go. And I appreciate you uh, inviting me along to, uh, to join in here. And hopefully we got some more people who are um, being introduced to, to you, to your work, who may not, uh, I know there's quite a few in here who are well familiar with, uh, with your craft, so. Well, not only to oh. me, I hope that you also <laughs> are getting some out of this. We had a few new few new members join our join our channel here on Twitch, so it's it's good to see uh, good to see some new faces in here, and hopefully we'll see see them again soon for some of our, our live astro imaging. And like I said, most of the time on Saturday nights is like always cloudy, so we do our, our image processing, um, our rainy day astronomy sessions uh, live on Twitch at eight o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. And yeah, sometimes we come up with a good image. Other times it's, well, we needed some more integration time. But we will uh, we always try to have something interesting kind of crop up on the screen. At other times we play Among Us because it's completely cloudy. <laughs> I tr Oh my god, okay, I tried playing Among Us once and that didn't work at all. It got really, really bad, really quick. Really bad? Uh, How do you mean? Well, Among, it's just, we get to Among Us is only different... as funny as the friends you played with. That's true. We had uh, we had some other people kind of come in there, and we uh, the format just didn't quite work on the on the channel for me. So um, you know, it's a, it's an experiment. We'll, uh, we'll maybe try some other games, but you know, we uh, try to have a chill time over here. And yeah, we just had some people that weren't exactly in the in the mood. They weren't taking they were taking it a little too seriously. So <laughs> all right, I see that some people are already leaving and saying goodbye. I suppose our streams, or at least my stream, is not holding on for very much longer, maybe five minutes and doing some outro stuff. And yeah, this was a lot of fun, but streaming for almost exactly two hours now is also pretty exhausting, but a lot of fun. And I don't think that... Always I, a good time. Yes, it's always a good time. I'm glad that we got this chance. It was just a spontaneous idea this morning for me that we could do this together, actually. And the sad thing is that I missed a beautiful dinner with my girlfriend over on their parents' house for the stream, but it was, I, I think it was worth it. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching that right now and hearing that. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I appreciate you uh, giving up your, your dinner for to, to do this and witness an amazing astronomical event that uh, is generally one of those times that, yeah, it's a once in a lifetime view. So as uh, hopefully for those who are watching on here, weren't, uh, I guess, bemused by the image, but I think it's an incredible shot that we were able to see as brief as it was. Um, so I thank you guys for, for tuning in over here on uh, on Twitch. We'll kind of th keep things going uh, once we say good evening to uh, to Tim in a bit. And then, yeah, we'll uh, see how the rest of the evening goes. All right. So in this case, if you want to turn on your stream for a little bit longer, that's of course possible. And to everyone in my chat, I see that there are still 52 people watching right now, which is still more than average to my other live streams on YouTube, which is amazing. Thank you for everybody hanging out. Thank you for you, Tom, for joining me this evening. And did I want to say anything else? I don't think so. I, I've had some comments on the videos and on posts that the last video was so long ago. And yeah, I, I was struggling a bit with motivation for this because there were so many clouds. But I have a new video rolling out very soon. And I hope that those, this will live up to any expectations. All right. And Excellent. I don't think that I need to say anything more. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. And this is the point where I always stumble over my outro. But I have any screen for this. No, I don't. And to everybody in chat, thank you for watching. And as for me, my name's Tim. I'm an astro addict. 
I wish you all, everybody in the chat, and over to you, Tom, in the Twitch chat, I wish everybody clear skies, and may the night be with us. See ya. Thank you very much. Tim, have a good evening, and uh, I, will, uh, I will amend my closing remarks, whereas uh, I've been Tom, I'm the Astro Canuck, this is the Astro Addict, we are not here to change the world, we're here to share the universe. Have a fantastic evening, everyone, and we will see you soon. Amazing. Goodbye. All right. Take care, Tim.